Welcome to The God Room with Danny Hobble. Danny's art ministry has touched millions of people around the world. For the past four decades, Danny has shared his talent by spreading the Word of God through art. Join us now as Danny shares his inspiration behind the talent in The God Room. Hi, welcome to The God Room. I'm Danny Halbom, and this is my wife, Diana Halbom. And uh, we'd like to welcome, welcome you to our show. What we want to talk to you today about is wealth. We all want to be wealthy, and actually, we are wealthy. We have, we have wealth, money and stuff in our, in our um, bank accounts right now. All of us do. What I'm talking about is I had a dream, and this dream was actually quite a while ago now. Um, and, and, you know, I don't even know if it was a dream. It was more like a vision, you know, and there's a difference. You know, when you're having a dream, you know the, what a dream is. The vision is you're awake, but you're not, and you're seeing. Th and when this was more like a vision, um, and what the Lord, the, what the vision was about was the Lord took me uh, up to heaven. I was up in heaven, um, but I, I wasn't in... Um, you know, were you seeing all the, the the glory around in heaven, whatever? I was in. He took me up into my mansion, mm. and when I got in there, I mean, I'm walking around and it was like a beautiful place. And all of a sudden, it just it just came to me, probably the Holy Spirit, and just told me, you know, I just knew that this was my mansion mm -hmm. in heaven. And the interesting thing about this was. As I'm walking around inside my mansion up in heaven, which, you know, the Lord says that, you know, we all, he's preparing a place for us yeah. and we all have mansions. Mm -hmm. um, when he took me inside there, the, it was like, everything was in like a gold and a silver kind of shiny, there was no real colors involved in it. It was like golds and silvers. Okay. and. There was like knickknacks and stuff, and I happened to notice that all the things that were in my mansion that made up the mansion, um, you know, like I say, all the knickknacks and statues and all this, was all things that I had done while I was down here. They're all related to things that I've done for the Lord down here. And I was looking at everything, I was like, oh yeah, I remember, you know, um, you know, the certain things, like there was a thing of a car that was there, and we, we bought some cars for people and stuff like this. We helped mm -hmm. them out oh, along okay. the way. And it was things like this that I've done. And as I'm going through, I'm looking at everything, and then I'm looking on the walls, and here are the paintings that I did for the Lord. And I've done tons of paintings throughout mm -hmm. my career for, right. for Christ. And here are the paintings on the wall, but they weren't painted um, like I painted them down here, they were more almost like gold etchings oh, on the wow. wall, which okay. was kind of cool. Um, and I'm going throughout throughout the whole mansion, like from room to room, and look at th and everything that was there. The like I said, the the knickknacks and the statues and the paintings, they all seemed to have a glow from them, and that's what lit up the room. Wow. Finally, I, I the Lord took me over to uh, it was, seemed like the center part of the house. And it was the mantle. And it was a mantle like over a fireplace. And there was a mantle there. And I noticed that there was, now that I'm trying to recall, I don't know if it was actually like a candle or something, but there was some object like that that had a light on it. And there were three lights like on a, that. Like a globe, like a gl these globe type of thing with light coming out of it. It's something like that, yeah. I mean, you know, to be specific, I don't re remember. I just remember it was some kind of an object, okay. and it was three of them up on the mantle, and they were, it was, they were like glowing bright. And I was looking at these, and I looked at that behind on the mantle. This is on the mantelpiece. Behind the mantle was this big. It looked like a mirror. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was, but it looked like a huge mirror that was over this huge mantle. And in the mirror. I could see all these smaller lights that just went, it was almost like you could see 
like the universe, you know, like looking at the stars, like it just, it just went infinite on, you know, so many lights in there. And I remember turning to the Lord and just saying, Lord, what is this? I have no idea what I'm looking at. And what he told me was that all the lights that were in the mantle were people that have been either um, influenced, influenced blessed. Or, or blessed or saved or whatever um, by things that I have done. They're almost like, I wouldn't say trophies, but in a way like that. Mm -hmm. And they were represented by all these lights that were in there. Okay. And then my attention came back to the three lights that were on the mantle, and I says, you know, one of these, they seem to be more significant and brighter. And he told me, he said, actually they are. These are my three sons mm. that have come to salvation as well. Mm. And then I, I woke up and, you know, I looked at it when it just like filled me. It was like so great that I got to see all that. Um, also this, to see my, my sons, you know, mm -hmm. being saved in there and everything. But what he was trying to show me in all of that is this. Like I mentioned when we started the show off, you know, that we have money in our bank. Our bank is our spiritual bank. Yeah. Now, you know, you talk about wealth and you say, oh, yeah, I know all that. Now, listen to me for a minute. Our wealth, if you have money, I mean, what good is that? I've known people that have had tons of money, and probably a lot of you have too, uh, and even in just the last stock market crash that we had, they've lost practically everything of it. Yeah. So money can come and go and be gone and that's it. But when we have a bank account, you know, put your treasures in heaven kind of thing, you know, that wealth that's stored we will always have. Nobody can take it from us. No thief can take it from us. As a matter of fact, there's a Bible verse on that. And it says, in Matthew 6, 19, it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, we store things up in all the things that we, we did. Like, you know, what he was, he was showing me in this, in this dream, in this vision, mm -hmm. was the fact that, you know, things that we do, those are our treasures, our rewards. There were the, the gold car that was on the thing there, or the statue, or, or different things that, you know, that we have done for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And basically... I mean, if you want to take it even further than that, what was real be real to me, is we are building our own mansions down here in this life. This life that we have right now is the only life that we're going to have outside being with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So everything that we do here is really important for when we get up there. So basically you're saying that the time that we put in, we are investing exactly in, in our future in heaven, but... Um, Say when we're in our God room and we spend time with the Lord, we are investing that time when we pray for our loved ones or for our nation or for Israel. We're, those are the things that nobody sees. Right. That time that we are investing by having that personal time with the Lord where those prayers can be activated by our love, by our faith, by the time we are investing. Because it's more than, say, just your, the artwork or just oh, the things that we physically do, but the investment that we put in by spending time with the Lord, but through prayer and working things out, you know, from our heart. So you're no, saying we're going to cash in in a new way that we really can't understand right now, but, you know, building that trend. Well, and, and the interesting point about that is what you said about investments, because that, that was brought up too. The investments that we make, it's just like, okay, Again, let's go back to my vision. Mm -hmm. Here I was seeing all these stars in the, uh, in this, look like a mirror mm -hmm. that went on. And the Lord said, you know, these are lives and stuff to touch. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, it went, almost looked like forever. I mean, it was just so many stars. I'm going, I've not touched that many people. I mean, my work is out and it hits, you know, mm -hmm. actually has been, there was millions of my prints sold and it's probably touched them in some way. 
but I'm thinking, I didn't do all that. But in reality, it has. And I'll tell you why, because we, in, in, like you said, invest, okay? My cousin who brought me to the Lord, yeah. okay? He's the one that brought me to Christ. And from there, I started up my career. So whatever we gain, you know, the Lord says that, you know, that we will be paid, you know, our reward down here, down in the, uh, you know, for what we've done down here. Whatever I reap in my rewards in heaven, a part of that really needs to go to my cousin mm -hmm. who actually brought me to Christ and to other people who have helped me along the way, maybe pastors and or people mother, talking to, you know, who, and my mother, yeah. you know, who's prayed for me constantly, which I know has helped me out. Mm -hmm. All of this, I have to share that wealth with them because they deserve, they you invested in me right. and that investment needs to return in dividends. So right. we're paying back to them. And so it's the same thing. I might, maybe the painting has helped somebody, but they've also helped somebody else and whatever. I get a piece of all of that. So that's why those lights just went forever. And what we do down here is an investment. You know, again, let's take this. Billy Graham. Yeah. Lord only knows what his mansion is going to look like. Yeah. But his mother, who's never preached, she's never done anything as far as I know, she will have a piece of all of that because she brought Billy Graham up. She gave him love. She nurtured him, you know, throughout, right. you know, without his, his mother, right. he probably wouldn't be here. So she has a legal right to a lot of that as well. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that, you know, all of these investments that we make down here, we can not only take us with us and, and help us build our mansions up there, but I mean, you know, it does, it creates the mansion itself. If, if we just take our, as I've written before, and we'll do a session on that, what I call the golden ticket, mm -hmm. where you accept Christ and then from then on, you're not really living for him and you still pretty much, you know, do what you want and really, you know, you know yeah. don't help out others and you're not really living the Christian life. Because you've accepted Christ, the Lord says you go to heaven. But you're probably going to have an empty room, I mean, an empty house. I mean, because you haven't invested anything in the Lord to have the rewards there for you. Here's another parable that even Jesus brought up. It says, Matthew 25, 14 through 28. It's the parable of the, um, of the talents. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called on his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, another two, another one, and each according to his ability. And rather going through this because it's rather long, basically this fellow gave talents to certain people. He gave them, you know, this one he gave ten, the other one he gave five, and the other one two. The one that had the ten multiplied it, the one that had the five also multiplied it, but the one with the two just buried it. And then when it finally came time for a payment and the master came back, um, the one with the, the big talents and he doubled it or tripled it, whatever it was, you know, he got rewarded for that and so did the other one. But the one that buried it, um, the master was pretty ticked off at him and he says, you're not even get, getting what, you, what I already originally gave you and he gave to the other person. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, it's the same thing with, with what we do down here as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if we just accept the Lord and say, okay, I've got my golden ticket, I'm going to heaven and just do nothing else for the Lord, don't really turn our lives over to the Lord, we're not going to have any of the rewards that we have, and, and whatever we do have will probably be, be taken away. You know, it's, this, it's the same parable, basically, in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that, that we do, um, it's... What I'm saying is just, we can take it with us, and we do take it with us, but it's not, you know, the $10,000 we have in the bank or the fancy cars that we bought down here, it's other things. You know, it's the love we've invested mm -hmm. and it's, you know, helping others out and, and, and so forth. Um, you know, these are the things that are stored up in heaven. And here's another thing to, to consider with all the wealth. It's like I mentioned earlier when I first started out, I said, oh, you, got, you have money in your bank account. We do. Within that money, our, again, I hate to use the term, but our golden ticket to get to heaven has been paid for mm -hmm. through that money. Christ already paid for it. 
There's no way that we could possibly have paid for that. Right. It's too expensive. But he's already paid for that. But he left other money in the bank account too. Here, not up in heaven, in here. And how do we do, how do we get the money out of that? By getting close to God yeah. and getting to know the Lord and, and walking with him. By doing that, we get blessings, blessings. from the Lord yeah. and we get favor from the Lord. And we receive all these things which are yeah. um, wealth. Because, you know, basically when we're walking with the Lord, um, because he is blessed, everywhere he goes is blessed. There's right. favor, there's power, there's love everywhere he goes. So as we walk with him, we will share in that with him. But if we let go of his hand and we begin to stray and wander off, then we, we wander away from those blessings that we could have right now and the peace that we could have, you know, and the empowerment right. to actually help other people. So we really want to stay in his presence and stay walking with him. Right. Yeah. But, you know, and, and so that's really what I'm so talking about as far as still having money in the bank. These are blessings um, and favors from the Lord and, you know, helping out of situations. Um, all of this is stored up in our bank account, but we're not going to get it unless we withdraw from the bank. And you withdraw from the bank by getting close to the Lord, mm -hmm. and therefore He can bless you. You know, God wants to bless you so much. Yes. I mean, that's what He He built us for His pleasure, and He wants to bless you. I mean, we, you know, a lot of us have children. Don't you want to give them everything? I mean, you just want to bless them beyond compare. Yeah. And that's what God wants to do. But you have to be in a certain place to receive that blessing. You know, it's it's like. If, if we have a, a child that maybe they're old enough to drive, but they're just not responsible. They're reckless and they, you know, you give him a bicycle and he crashes into things and just doesn't care. You, you still love the child yes. and you would love to give him some nice new car or something so he can, has the freedom to drive around, but you're not going to give it to him until he's responsible enough to have that car. Otherwise, you're just going to kill him. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing with, with the Lord. When we walk with Him, we get s stronger and stronger in the Lord, more and more like Christ is what we should be doing. Yeah. And when we get to certain levels, then He can give us the blessing that He wants to give us because we're ready to receive it. Right. That reminds me of the prodigal story because, you know, had the son stayed with the father and stayed close to him, everything the father had was already his. Right. And because he wandered away and ended up in... The, the pig sty and admire, you know, he he was forfeiting that because he didn't invest the time and stay and stay the course and stay with the father, right. you know, what he already had available to him right there. So, you know, when he came back, it's not that the father gave him a, a lot more. He gave him what he always had in his bank account. Yeah. You know, the son, prodigal son, always had these things available to him. And so it's really not the Lord leaving us. It's when we leave and we wander off and we get away from his oh, presence, absolutely. then, you know, that, like you're talking about the storehouse that's right here. We can't take anything out of it if we're not there. You know? Right, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, I mean, God just really, he was, like I said, he would just love to pour yeah. things, pour all the blessings on us. Mm. But we have to be in the right position or we're just not responsible enough to handle the blessings that he wants to do, you know, give us, you know. I'm sure there's um, a lot of things that he would even, the Holy Spirit would love to tell us. But at, at, until we reach a certain um, maturity with, with the Lord to understand what he's saying, number one, we wouldn't have a clue. And the other thing, we're probably misunderstanding it, you know, and go in a, in a totally different direction. Yeah. And so that's just a matter of teaching. But other than that, just blessings itself. We have to be in the right area um, to receive the blessings in order to get the blessings from the Lord. But they are available to us. And like I was saying, you know, things that we do down here, everything that we, we do for, for others. I mean, even Jesus himself said, you know, if you have done something to the least of these, mm -hmm. you have also done it to me. 
So he counts all that. So everything that we do down here, we're putting, you know, rewards and wealth into our mansions and into, you know, everything that we have up, up in heaven that we'll have forever. And we also reap it down here. You can never outgive out give God. I mean, anything that you do, if you help somebody out and you feed the poor, whatever it is, God will bless you for that while you're down here. He'll also give you the rewards up in heaven, but he wants to bless you down here as well. You know, and that's, that's the storehouse. That's the, um, you know, the, the, the bank account that we have down here. It's all the blessings and, like I say, favors and, and things of that nature that he, and who would, you know, I, you know, here's the interesting thing. I've known a lot of rich people, rich in the world, millions of dollars and so forth. I uh, worked with them and, and different business associations. And you know, you talk to them and they have all the money, they have mm -hmm. anything that they want, they just buy it and what have you. And the one thing, if you say, okay, you know, well, you've got everything, you can have anything right. that you don't have, what is it that you want? It's got nothing to do with anything the world can give them. Yeah. What they want, mostly, wow. peace. Mm -hmm. Peace of mind. They strive to have peace of mind. You know, when you start making a whole lot of money, that's probably the least thing that you get, because everybody wants it. Mm -hmm. And you have to completely guard yourself and put people in place to guard you. Peace of mind is so important to people who have everything. And we have that freely. And we can have that, you know, the closer that we are with the Lord, the more we are, get to be more like Christ, mm -hmm. we yeah, will also and, have the peace that Christ yes. had when he walked here. And I think, uh, at least for women, um, we want love. We want relationship. Right. You know, that brings us peace. So it's still about that relationship, you know, the intimacy with the Father and the Holy Spirit, because... If we don't receive, it's because we're not investing that time and just taking time to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Right. You know, we get busy in our lives and we, we go out and do what we want. Oh, I know. And, you know, and, and we're so used to that. Yeah. It's, you know, even, even ourselves. I mean, you know, we, we spend time in our God room a lot. And, you know, it's at least probably once a day. I mean, even if it's just for a short period of time, constantly. But... Even with all of that, there's still a lot of times that I just, you know, want to do what I want to do. And there's really nothing wrong with that as long as you do give the Lord enough time to, you know, um, to sit and talk with Him. Because there's always stuff that He wants to improve on in yes. our lives, and it's for our benefit, mm -hmm. you know. But if we don't sit have take the time to sit in our God room, which again could be anywhere, just as long as it's quiet time with the Lord, mm -hmm. we're not going to hear His voice, and we're not going to know the instruction that He has for us to make us better people, to, so that we have more rewards in heaven and down here as well. Mm -hmm. You know. So again, like I say, yes, absolutely, you can take it with you. Mm -hmm. It's not like the world says, "Oh, you can't take it with you." Ah, not so. You can take it with you, but what you take, you have to understand this: where you're going. Do you take snow skis and, and full jackets when you go to the Bahamas? No. <laughs> so neither is there any room for taking your fancy cars or your money yeah. up in heaven. It's going to be what you'll be using up there. Yeah. And that's going to be the blessings and the favor from the Lord. And the relationships. And your relations, absolutely. Yeah. The, the people know? that we help, you know, come into the kingdom of God. I mean, the, like on your mantle, right. what is there? The trophies were your sons, their salvation. Right. They were there with you. And so what you're saying is everything that we do for God, what we invest in for God, those are the things that build and create and design our mansions in heaven. Absolutely. And those are the things that will remind us of certain things. On this, Like you said, there was a car. I know you've helped people with cars and Yeah, and I just brought that just for an example yeah, so you have something to understand. Little but, trinkets, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is to understand that, you know, yes, we have a big bank account. We have all these blessings stored, and we can get them as the Lord gives us, you know, as we stay with the Lord so that we can receive them. But the other thing is, too, is like you were saying before, investing. Mm -hmm. If we invest in people and in, in our children, 
in our neighbors, in you know, people we don't even know. Mm -hmm. When we invest in all of that, we will collect dividends on that. Yeah. And that's how we, at like the parable with the, the talents, mm -hmm. where they doubled it, this is where we double it. You know, the Lord might have thrown a million dollars in our spiritual bank account, mm -hmm. so we have a, a million spiritual yeah. dollars in there. But when we start investing it in other people and other things, that just multiplies. So when we do leave here, mm -hmm. as the parable says, and the master comes and he says, what you do with it? Mm -hmm. We can say, oh, I doubled it, I tripled it, whatever it is, and you'll get all that reward. Mm -hmm. And we don't do it just for the reward. We do it because we love the Lord. If, if yeah. he took, because, I, you know, I really think, you know, when they, they have the thing about, you know, our taking our crowns and we throw it at Christ's feet. I think it's not just our crowns of life that we throw at his feet. We will do that. And rightfully so, because that is his. It's, we'd never earned it. But I think everything that he's given us, all the things in our mansion, all the dividends and things that we, we acquire down here, mm -hmm. the rewards, are also his. Because without him, without the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. we would never be able to do that. And taking all that and giving it to the Lord, he, will, he always will give it right back yeah. to us. You know? And you know, we, we, we need to invest where it's profitable. You wouldn't invest in a bad company. Well, investing yeah. in the world doesn't work either. And, you know, don't invest yeah. on the earthly things, and, invest on the heavenly and things. And too, where each individual has a calling, a specific calling, an area in their life that God has anointed them in. Yes. And um, so I, I yeah. really, you know, like you, it's many, many things, art, writing, music, uh, you know, video work. You're anointed in specific areas. And so when we invest those areas and give them to God, then that's where, you know, things begin to happen and the fruit grows and we plant the seeds. But, you know, I want to encourage everybody to um, ask the Lord what their callings are, uh, spend time with the Lord, and, yeah. and let Him uh, teach you where to invest and how to invest, you know, in other people and in His kingdom. Yeah, and it's important. It really is. You know, again, not just to your... You know, our loved ones, which we, it's automatically that we, you know, love. But, you know, invest in other people and other mm -hmm. things, anything for the Lord. Yeah. And it will be returned back to you. Amen. So, again, we're going to leave. But before we do, remember, yes, you can take it with you. And build your mansion really pretty. Make Amen. a lot of things. Bye. We'll see you next time. There's nothing more important in life than your personal relationship with God. Nothing.